The camera most people recommend for beginners is the Canon T3i, T6i, T something i. But when I was first getting started, even that was way outside of my budget once you add lenses, a tripod, microphones, lights. So I want to test out some really cheap cameras to see if they're as bad as the price tag suggests. Let's choose our cameras. Expensive, 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 expensive. This is the cheapest video camera in the shop and it claims to shoot full HD video. This point and shoot costs four times more. I want to see if it's four times better. We'll compare those to this camcorder I bought five years ago and a one and a half year old smartphone. It's not the latest model. But hang on, isn't that still pretty expensive? Well, yes, but if you're watching this video, then there's a fairly good chance that you already have a smartphone with a camera, in which case it doesn't cost you anything to use it. So we're gonna test out these cameras and by the end of it, I'm gonna choose one of them to use for my next short film. So for this first test, I've set up a really difficult scene for these cameras. What we've got is a light on this side pointing into this scene here. And you can see there are lots of bright reflections. And that is what this cheap old camera is really struggling with. We've got a decent exposure on the violin here, but the camera just can't handle these bright reflections. They're just solid white. But we can fix that with the manual exposure settings, darkening the image until those white spots are basically gone. The cheap Vivitar camcorder is very similar, it starts off looking really bad, but then once you use the manual exposure, you can still get a decent image out of it. Although I did notice there was a kind of weird flicker happening, don't know what that's about. Let's look at the Sony point and shoot, because the automatic settings have definitely made it too bright, but these buttons don't do anything in video mode, so I can't make it darker. And finally we have the year old smartphone, which I've got on this Gorillapod mount. And if I hit record, the nice thing about this one is that I can actually tap to change the exposure to make sure that we're holding on to all of that information. So I'm gonna bring it down and then go keep going up until it's as bright as possible without losing detail. There we go. And by the way, this video is not sponsored. I haven't had any contact with any of these camera manufacturers. So I set up this image quality test but the cheapest camera, this one, for some reason just had this problem like it was corrupting the file or something. I've seen enough, this one is out. Looking at the old JVC footage, it's on a wide shot like this where you can really tell that it's not HD. There really isn't very much detail. The Sony, on the other hand, does well. Decent sharpness and the automatic exposure did get it right this time. The smartphone here definitely has the sharpest picture, but you can see that the camera couldn't quite handle how bright the sky was without darkening the trees quite a lot. Here's a side by side. I think I prefer the Sony. But for me, the most important part of image quality is how it handles people. So here we have the JVC in a kind of vlogging shot and you'll notice that the skin tones look pretty decent. It's got a nice level of contrast. I'm quite happy with this image, even though there isn't the most detail. The Sony did fairly well in this situation. I'm not a huge fan of the skin tones, but the auto exposure did work pretty well. The one thing that it did have trouble with was when I was spinning around so much, it did lose that autofocus and it was focusing on behind me. So that's definitely something you've got to watch out for with these cheap point and shoot cameras. And then we have the smartphone. I think this performs really well, both as far as color and general quality. So for this next test, I wanted to see how good the built-in microphone is. And I've definitely noticed that this one, the JVC, probably has the worst microphone. It's quite tinny, you might notice. The more expensive Sony definitely sounds better with the built-in microphones, but do bear in mind that the camera is quite close. It's only an arm's length away, so it's gonna sound pretty good. We are also indoors, so and it's quite quiet. So this is like the best case scenario. And finally, we have the smartphone. Now, phones usually have quite good microphones, but the extra good feature of these is that they have a headphone jack. These other cheap cameras have nowhere to plug in a microphone, so we would have to use external sound, we'd have to record the sound separately, but it is nice that we can plug in a microphone. For example, this one from Rode, which is fairly cheap, you can just plug it straight into the headphone jack and it will now record with a much larger, better microphone. And of course, there are plenty of other different kinds of microphone. You have the ones that clip onto your shirt. There are plenty of options when you have a mic input. But the real question is, does it sound any better? 
This is recording using the Rode microphone and right now I'll take it off. This is the built-in microphone. This is the extra microphone and this is back on the built-in microphone. Can you hear the difference? So as far as sound goes, the smartphone is definitely the best option, but it's all irrelevant if you decide to record the audio separately, which of course is what you're supposed to do to get the best results. And if you do that, then it doesn't matter which camera you're using, you'll get good sound from all of them. So over here we have the cheapest camcorder out of the bunch. This is the JVC and the battery is five years old. And yet after two hours almost of using it and to record, uh, basically just not turning it off, it's currently got zero minutes remaining on the battery, but it's still trucking on. On the other hand, over here, Sony seems to be doing very well. It's still on three out of four bars after two hours. That is a brand new camera though. And then over here we have the Samsung, which is, I believe, about a year and a half old. And it is sitting at 5%. And I know how quickly that last 5% disappears. It has been two hours and two minutes and the JVC has finally gone. And there goes the Samsung. It has been two hours and five minutes and the Sony goes on. The old JVC surprised me actually. There's a bit of noise but I think it handled it pretty well. Next up is the Sony, which of course is much more expensive, but really I can hardly see any noise, especially by the time it gets on YouTube, I don't think any will be showing up. And it's the same situation with the smartphone. As long as it's a fairly well lit room, these cameras can handle it just fine. But if we go into a room that is much more dimly lit, then we can really start to see the problems. The JVC tends to get quite mushy, we're definitely losing detail in the shadows and it kind of tends to just all become this weird orange colour. The Sony definitely has some noise problems here, if you look at the yellow walls, there's lots of grain, it's that kind of colourful blocky grain that really doesn't look too good. The smartphone on the other hand has a finer grain, I think I prefer it. Then I turned off even more lights and you can see that the JVC gets very mushy and the Sony was very grainy, plus I had to really mess with the colors to try and fix the skin tones. And then also I noticed that the autofocus was really having a lot of trouble, even though this was just a static scene, it kept readjusting, so it's not ideal for low light. And finally, the Samsung smartphone really falls apart when it's this dark, just lots of noise and really weird color artifacts. The shadows went all blue and I tried to correct it, but really the image was just too far gone. So which camera am I gonna use for my next short film? Well, we've seen that none of the cameras work that well in low light. The Samsung seems to be the best for sound and the Sony seems to have the best battery, but the camera's always stuck in automatic exposure mode. If I wanted something simple and compact, I'd probably go for the Sony. But if I really cared about quality, then a smartphone is probably gonna be better than all of the cheapest cameras. So with that in mind, the camera that I'm going to be using for my next short film is the JVC. And here's why. When I was doing these tests, I was so focused on dynamic range and resolution, you know, technical stuff, that to be honest, I wasn't even really thinking about what I was actually filming. One of them was literally just the sky and some trees, right? It's like, I know that what's happening in the film is more important than how well the camera shoots in low light. But when I start watching tech videos, you know, like this one, it puts me in this mindset. I get distracted from storytelling and I start thinking scientifically. So I want to turn that on its head and just film with a really bad camera. I'll have no choice but to put all of my effort into telling the best story that I can because I won't be able to rely on making it look pretty. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you next week.